being somebody that reads the news every day and decides for whatever reason to not try and, uh, you know, erase uh, the information from my memory to prevent, uh, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder from living in such a shithole country, um, sometimes I come across stories that are like, you know, I want to say like, you know, the child in me wants to say, I told you so, you know, but it's, you know, it's not like anyone else uh, didn't really expect this. I think everyone saw this coming, but I got this epic news story here and I say epic with a capital E. It is epic, everybody. Tennessee woman gets emergency hysterectomy after doctors deny early abortion care. Tennessee's ban went into effect after Roe v. Wade was overturned. Mayron Hollis said she had just started taking contraceptives when she found out she was pregnant again a few months after giving birth in Feb 22. Despite the surprise, Hollis and her husband say they were excited about the pregnancy and eager to add another child to their growing family. Well, I've got to say this one. That's the first mistake. I mean, having kids in the year 2022 and the year 2023, I mean, you know, I go back and forth on this one, but... I'm, I'm pretty much, like, and I know that there's parents in my audience, and I hope that, you know, you had your kid a long time ago before you knew any better, but I don't know, man. Just the idea, like, I mean, just looking at the world, looking at how the world functions, the only reason I could see having children is a combination of narcissism and be, just being a boring motherfucker. Um... Like, if you are so bored that you can't think of any other ways to make your life have meaning, that you resort to just, like, I'm gonna spread the genes. Gonna spread the genes around. Yeah, that'll give me something to do with my life. I don't know, man. To me, now I know there's parents in my audience, you know, God bless you or whatever, you know. But... You know, in the year 2022, 2023, man, I'm sorry. Just the idea that you would start a family. I don't, I don't know, man. I just, I would like to hear an argument. I, like, I don't know. Maybe I just haven't heard the right argument as to why having a family now <laughs> is, is the best time uh, to do so. But anyway, let's keep going. Hollis, 32, had no idea the excitement would turn into a fight for her baby's life and her own. The Tennessee woman would end up needing a life-saving emergency hysterectomy, ending her opportunity to give birth to more children after she says she was denied medically necessary abortion care at a hospital in her home state for life-threatening complications earlier in her pregnancy. My doctor told me I needed to do the surgery. If I didn't, I could die. The baby could die, Hollis said, because she had delivered by cesarean section and the two pregnancies were so close together, Hollis's OBGYN was worried she could develop a cesarean scar pregnancy, a type of ectopic pregnancy where the fertilized egg is implanted in the cesarean scar after a previous C-section, which can cause the uterus to rupture leading to excessive bleeding and even death, according to the National Institutes of Health. Well, I'm glad that the NIH is weighing in, that having your uterus literally explode from inside you could theoretically lead to death. I'm glad that uh, the NIH has come in to uh, really put their foot down on that issue. But this is, a, I have a, just a question, you know, for my audience and, and maybe people watching me um, could fill me in. Because this is something, uh, to me, honestly, like, I just, like, I just don't get it. I just don't, I don't understand having children. I don't understand wanting children. I don't understand having C-sections. Like, you know, there's some instances where, you know, you're fucked up and you need to have a C-section. But I don't know, man. The idea that you would have a C-section and then get pregnant again and not want to have an abortion immediately. I, I just, I don't know, man. I just, to me, well, I'm not trying to victim blame here, just to be clear. I just, uh... It's just a whole shitstorm of information here going on in a situation where it's just a roll of the dice. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, oh, well, okay, uh, I'm going to have a kid and that means there's just a good chance I'm going to fucking die because we live in fucking 1312. You know what I mean? So it's like, I just don't get it. I, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to understand what these people are thinking. And I just don't. I really don't. I just, I just don't. Uh, but again, I'm not trying to victim blame here because obviously the government is killing people. That's what's happening. Um, 
is the government is trying their best to kill people, uh, you know, that are just not good enough. You know, they're not desirable, if you will, uh, in the eyes of the government. In August, Holis found out that she did not, or rather, that she did have a cesarean scar pregnancy with the pregnancy bulging out of her uterus and a placenta accreta, a serious pregnancy complication in which the placenta grows too deeply into the uterine wall and part or all of the placenta then remains attached to the uterine wall during delivery. The condition may cause severe blood loss after delivery. I just want to note, by the way, that humans, just biologically, right? I know biology, not something Americans are good at. Humans, biologically, for whatever reason, I don't know. If you believe in God, it's probably his fault or her fault. But hey, come on now. If you believe in God, that's a whole different problem. But biologically, humans, right, during the birth giving process, have one of the highest rates of, uh, what's the word? Uh, like matricide? Is that what it is? I don't know. Um, you know, the person giving birth dies during the process. I forget what that, that word is. Human beings, for whatever reason, we just fucking suck at it. Like, we just can't give birth without a whole host of problems. You know what I mean? Mortality, uh, maternal mortality, whatever it is. There's like a compound word for that. But anyway, um, just for whatever reason, we're, we're fucking garbage at it, right? But like, the other option is like, okay, we have medicine, right? We have, you know, theoretically, we have doctors, you know? We have modern medicine. Um, but it's like, we're not using it now. Like, we're just like, we're just like, all right, let's just let nature play its course. Now, again, I think that there's a lot of value in letting nature play its course. But the idea that, you know, again, let nature play its course. If problems arise, fix the fucking problems, right? But we live in a society now uh, where, oh, you just had a little issue? Well, death sentence. Having two children too close to one another is a death sentence. I'm sorry. I don't, hey, who are you to decide to have a kid two months after having another kid? <laughs> Dead. I could hemorrhage because that was already bulging out. I don't know if I want to hear the word bulging in this instance. Uh, Hollis was eight weeks pregnant when she met with a maternal fetal medicine specialist who confirmed she had a cesarean scar pregnancy and sent her back to Vanderbilt University Medical, Care, uh, Medical Center for Care. Vanderbilt University Medical Center said it would not comment on the case because she wanted the baby. Hollis said it took her and her husband time before they were able to decide that they wanted to end the pregnancy. Now, again, that's your first mistake is wanting to have a baby. That's your first fucking mistake, right? So, again, not victim blaming. I, I'm, just, I'm just being honest. Hola said she was unaware of the changing landscape at Tennessee out of the... <laughs> okay, now I am victim blaming. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. Next, I'm sorry. Now I am victim blaming. All right, so this mom, I'm sorry. You get the dumb fuck award for today. I'm sorry. You just the biggest dumb fuck of the day. I mean, hey, there's going to be another one tomorrow. It's not that big of a deal. Like, I don't know, man. You think, okay, it's in the news every day that, you know... Roe v. Wade is overturned. Planned Parenthood v. Casey overturned. It's in the news literally every day that red states are going to literally ban all abortion care or just any pregnancy care, right? And you decide to have a family. I'm just like, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Whoa. Like, what else is this dumbass unaware of? You know what I mean? If she's unaware of shit that's in the news literally every day for fucking weeks and weeks and months and months straight, is she unaware of, of how to tie her own shoes? Like, I'm just, I'm asking questions here. I'm just curious. Um, Hola said her doctor did not, no, I'm just saying, I'm sorry, before I continue, like, I, I'm not trying to say people should be required to follow the news every day. Like, that's not my claim here. My claim is, if you are going to have a child, you should follow the news. You know, maybe at least six months before you even, you know, I don't know, conceive? I like, you should, you should know something about the fucking world. I don't know, man. I'm just like, I'm just, maybe it's too much to ask, Right. Maybe it's too much to ask. But if you're going to bring someone else into this planet that we call Earth, you should know something about the planet called Earth. I'm just, hey, a request. <laughs> just a request. Okay. One day before the ban went into effect, medical records show that in the early weeks of her pregnancy, Hollis's placenta accreta had progressed, and she was concerning 
According to her medical record, she was 11 weeks pregnant at the time. It was a hard pregnancy. It was scary the whole time. They thought they were going to have to reconstruct my bladder. They didn't know if it was going to touch any other organs, if they could even stop the bleeding if I did hemorrhage. When the couple realized how big the risk was to Hollis's life, they decided it was best to end the pregnancy. Hollis had been offered abortion care since the ban had not gone yet into effect. But when she reached out to her OBGYN to ask for care on August 24th, it was too late. That was the day Tennessee's trigger ban prohibiting all abortions went into effect. Now, again, I'm just like, okay, so you have a fucked up pregnancy. You know it for several weeks. You'd think, oh, I live in a state that's going to ban any uh, health care for me. You should look up what day it is. I mean, I'm just like, like, did that... I, I, don't, and I know, I know, it's stressful, I know it's stressful, I'm just saying, and I'm not trying to be like one of those, you know, motherfuckers out there victim blaming, I'm just saying, I know it's stress. I understand that, but it's like, I don't know, man, maybe I'm built different, like, if I am in a situation where I know that there's a chance I could die, I'm gonna look at whether or not the government, which is in the news every day, wants to ban me from going to the doctor, like, I'm just like, that's something I would want to know, you know what I mean, like, I'm just, um, the ban criminalizes performing an abortion, making it a felony, an exception to save the life of the mother or prevent serious and permanent bodily injury only comes to play when a physician is defending themselves in court. Now, this is something I want to say this. I've said this on my show for a lot of time. Um, a lot of people come up to me as like, oh, that's a good point. You know, I'm educating the masses here. When Republicans put in exceptions for, you know, they love the life of the mother. You know, you ever hear that? You ever hear it's like a short term, you know, like an abbreviation? You know, how do you feel about life of the mother? Well, you know, on the subject of life of the mother, I think we should have exceptions. You know, like that's how they talk about this stuff. Life of the mother, life of the mother. But what does that mean? An exception, again, the default is you're a doctor. You are going to go to court for literally weeks, if not months, lose your job and face 20 years or 10 years in prison based on the state, right? That's the default. That is going to happen. If you carry out an abortion... Even if it's the life of the mother, you are going to court, you're going to lose your job, you're going to lose your income, you're going to, like, again, this is all, this is 1000% guaranteed. Now, again, the only part that's not guaranteed is, are you going to go to jail? That depends on your defense, right? So, realistically, when it comes to it, doctors, even though they swore an oath to do no harm, are going to do some harm because they don't want to go to court and lose their job, right? It's just that simple. Self-preservation. Okay, so again, whenever you see Republicans talking about life of the mother, this life, you know, rape and incest, rape and incest, that's another one, rape and incest, you got rape, you got incest, you got life of the mother, all of it means nothing, okay, it literally is, is irrelevant, the only thing it does is gaslight people into thinking that they're not as crazy as they are, that's it, and again, Americans are fucking stupid, so they go, well, they said life of the mother, so, <laughs> gee willikers, right, because most Americans are fucking dumb, right? Like, they're just dumb. Like, that's what I really, I just, I fucking, I just can't stand how dumb Americans are. Now, yeah, I'm not trying to be a victim blamer here. But, like, this is a story where you have a dumb motherfucking American operating in a dumb motherfucking country, walking around and, like, shuffling about with a bunch of other dumb motherfuckers that are afraid to do, I don't, afraid to save someone's life. You're a doctor. Someone is going to die. You know they're going to die. And you're choosing, well, you know, my 401k. <laughs> like, I'm just saying, like, I don't know, man. I don't fucking know. Like, this is a fucked up situation. You know, I'm just, it's not good. A separate so-called heartbeat ban that prohibited all abortions after fetal cardiac activity is detected was also in effect. Physicians told ABC News the exception is unclear and many worry about the consequences they could face for providing essential care. So again, just to be clear, right? When there is an exception, you have to go to court and defend yourself for those of you that have never been to court for any reason i can tell you going to court fucking sucks okay what happens if you sleep in B a bunch of gangsters break into your house unconstitutionally you know what happened to the constitution we don't know gangsters break into your house and point guns at your face if you sleep in a couple hours late right so that's what court is you have to take off of your work take off of any family engagements go to a building sit there for 29 hours in the fucking room because it's not like you know they can call you on your cell phone and say hey we're gonna you know you're up on the docket pretty soon here no you gotta go to court and you gotta sit there all 
fucking day unless you got a good lawyer that's able to like maybe oh maybe you can take an extended breakfast or lunch or something and then you can wander around the fucking food court or whatever until you know like again court is a fucking annoying ass experience and again that is guaranteed there is a 100 percent chance that if you do any of this stuff when you're a doctor 100 percent chance you're going to court that's not again because the law is determined in the court were you actually engaging to save the life of the mother? That's what the trial is there to find out, right? So again, doctors don't want to go to court. They want to do their job and make their money and whatever, right? So they're just not going, the exception is irrelevant. There is no exception. So again, I need people to understand that there's a difference between the law and the real world. The law is a fantasy world. The law is a bunch of people playing patty cake with each other, singing songs in kindergarten. That's the law. It is completely, like if you were to have a Venn diagram of the law and the real world, it would be almost like two completely separate circles. I'm willing to imagine that they're touching, but there really is not an intersection. They could be touching. They don't necessarily have to be completely separate, but they might be touching. That would be the Venn diagram. People that pretend that this life of the mother discourse means anything, I just hate them all. The media pretending it means anything, journalists, so-called TV people asking them, hey, well, do you, how do you feel about exceptions for the life of the mother? They're all lying to you, they're all gaslighting you, and they're all psychopathic, insane, fucking genocidal freaks. It's just that simple. Um, but anyway, you can read more of this. Uh, basically, this bitch got fucked up. Um, and uh, it seems that like she's still alive, and that's great, but it's like... This is a story that's happening all over the world. You know, this is just one example all over the world. I mean, you know, all over the world, yes, but also all over the United States since uh, the right-wing illegitimate Supreme Court uh, destroyed uh, health care in this country. Um, and so, again, I just, I don't know, man, reading stories like this one, it just reminds me that it's just like humans and society at large it's just a bunch of animals. I mean, let's, let's be honest, right? Like, duh, we're all animals. You know, some people like to pretend that they're not. Usually that's a religious point of view. Religion brainwashes people into thinking, oh, we're better than animals, right? We are somehow better, even though humans fundamentally are the worst animal that's ever roamed this earth. Dinosaurs were better for this planet than we are. Humans are garbage. They're garbage. They're garbage. They're fucking trash. Okay, I just... And, you know, this is my own personal. I'm just having fun here. I mean, I, if you can call this fun. I fucking hate. I fucking hate people. I hate Americans, right? But I also hate people. I hate humans. I just hate them. I've never had a good experience with another person but for maybe three or four people ever that just, like, aren't insufferable fucking just insane psychopathic freaks and i this whole show is just going to be dedicated to how much i hate humans but like again imagine could you could you just possibly imagine you are a politician and you want to craft legislation to revoke people's access to going to the doctor i mean it's insane i just i don't know what to say i mean that's just and everyone else is too lazy and stupid and addicted to their treats to do anything about it. That's the other worst part about it, myself included.